I think today I'd like to get a little bit further on with my 7S 18650 lithium ion pack which is uh, bolted to the wall here and if you've watched my last video you'll notice actually I've moved this piece of wood here and therefore the DIN rail up a little bit immediately under this shelf which uh, gives the pack a bit more protection and uh, well saves a bit of space in what is a pretty small shed. I've also put all the clips on for my DIY BMS, these uh, 3D printed brackets, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to do next. I want to get all the uh, modules for the DIY BMS installed and hooked up, and hopefully by the end of this video I'll be balancing this pack. In my last video about the DIY BMS, I'd uh, managed to get the Wemos D1 Mini all programmed up, connected to my Wi-Fi, and showing a web GUI. And it was connecting to this uh, module here, and uh, they were communicating just fine. And I was able to read the voltage of a uh, lithium-ion cell through this module via the Wemos and onto my computer via the Wi-Fi. However, I had left um, the thermistor riding a little bit high here because I had had the plan that the uh, thermistor could sit here through the back of the board and actually poke into the uh, cell pack itself, but that's not going to work because the bead of the thermistor itself is too big to get in between the gap of the cells. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resolder the thermistor and in fact install the thermistor on all the other modules and uh, I'll make sure that's a lot lower. And that's just going to sit next to the resistor and give a rough indication on the temperature. I guess that temperature will go up when the resistor is active, when this is in bypass mode. But that's of course another question. How hot will it get? Well that will depend on my resistors. And I've got a few different resistor values available to me. Must have ordered these when I wasn't entirely sure. I've got some 6.8 ohm resistors there, um, some 4 ohm and finally some 22 ohm and I'm sure I've got some 10 ohm here somewhere as well. So let's work out the current for these various discharge resistors. I equals V over R. So if we take that first resistor, the voltage will be, uh, well, discharging at is about 4.2 volts. Divided by 4, well, that's about 1, isn't it? Well, actually, I've done it on the calculator, and it's 1.05 amps. Uh, possibly a little bit high for me, that. I'm thinking lower. So I've gone ahead and done the rest of the maths. Now remember, these are probably only accurate to 10% at best. So uh, the 4 ohm resistor basically gave us 1 amp of discharge current. And the 6.8 ohm, about 600 milliamps. The uh, 10 ohm, about 400 milliamps. And the 22 ohm, just under 200 milliamps. Now this is, to be honest, the sort of level where I'm thinking we're probably best, the uh, 200 milliamps. I think that will be plenty, at least for now. But I also want to check the uh, power dissipation. These are 10 watt resistors. So, uh, well, we'll call it 200 milliamps. Uh, P power equals IV current times voltage. So the current, we'll just say, is 0 0.2 and the voltage is 4.2. And my calculator says that's 0.84 watts, so uh, less than a watt, well within the rating of these resistors. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. 22 ohms for now, and perhaps in the future I might adjust that. So there's the first module finished with the 22 ohm 10 watt power resistor, the discharge resistor there, soldered in, and uh, the thermistor, well... A lot lower now, isn't it? Much more sensible, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I've just got six more to do. Actually, I'm just checking I've got enough because, as you can see, these haven't fared very well in transit. A few are broken, but hopefully I should have another six. That one's a bit broken, but, yeah, I think it'll be all right, won't it? 
And there we have it, seven modules all ready to be mounted on my pack. I'm pretty pleased with the results. Hope they work. Back now on the wall of the shed and I've got my 3D printed brackets here with these little peg standoffs and uh, the BMS modules just quite happily sit in there like that. It's just a friction fit. It is stood off ever so slightly and they just clip on quite neatly like that but it does beg the question i think this is the module that i've already provisioned is this cell number one or is the most negative point cell number one positive or negative hmm well after about three hours of procrastination i'm going to leave cell one over here so we will read it left to right one two three four five six seven anyway so I've now got to wire these uh, modules up to each other, or I think I'm going to do that at this point anyway. And these uh, wires are ready to be daisy chained. So uh, the idea is that this one will uh, connect through to that one, like that. A bit more difficult one handed, and uh, that pattern will continue on. So uh, that's the idea. That one goes into there. I don't know why I put a wire in this last one. I don't need one, do I? I only need one to that point there. These connectors are just in parallel, so you can use either side. That's absolutely fine, but, uh, well, left to right makes most sense to me, I think. Now, each one of these modules will be monitoring and, uh, when necessary, discharging its own pack. And, of course, it will need power. And it gets that from its own pack as well. And that's uh, going to use this connector down at the bottom. Make sure I've got positive and ground the right way around. And for now, at least, I've just put some alligator clips on here. And uh, some people will remember... The uh, bus bar had a loop in it, and that is going to be where I'm going to connect these crocodile clips. Um, hopefully that will work out, and that's not too bad. And uh, this one here, the negative. So that module should now, oops, if I can get the crocodile clip on, be powered. Um, now, I know crocodile clips probably aren't the best permanent wiring solution and perhaps i will solder them on or work something else out but for now at least in the testing stage i think crocodile clips are probably quite sensible right now i'm essentially where i got to a few weeks ago here on my ipad i'm connected to the uh, diy bms management console that the uh, wemos d1 mini serves over my wi-fi and uh, it's showing me that the uh, single cell that's connected here is sat at 4.03 5 volts there and uh, that's being shown in a graph but it's not terribly interesting because we've only got the one module connected so if we go to the modules button there is the module connected but um, I happen to know that um, 4.35 volts is not absolutely spot on so first of all I'd like to do a voltage calibration so this isn't perfect is it having my Wemos D1 mini just hanging off the module i certainly need to work out how i'm going to mount that but it's been powered actually at the moment by my 12 volt lead acid battery bank um, and using the pearl charger so that's powered completely independent of the uh, 7s pack now i've got my vicky meter down here my vicky multimeter and i'm just going to connect that across that first pack and uh, read the voltage we'll give that a moment to settle 3.986 volts so uh, we need to jump back to the uh, management console and uh, calibrate this module so in the cell modules section we can see the uh, voltage calibration and i think we just type in there 3.986 wasn't it and press go and uh, that adjust this figure here and we can go back to cancel and now we can th see 3.99 volts well that's pretty good actually isn't it we said 3.986 so uh yeah rounded up that's 3.99 volts this module is nicely calibrated so now i just need to add a second module 
So here we go then. I'll disconnect the uh, second module from the third, but reconnect it back to the first. And then obviously I need to give this module some power. So I'll pop in the connector there, making sure ground and VCC are the right way around. Yes, they are. Connect that there to VCC. That should be okay for now at least and this side to ground on that pack of course we've got many grounds we're dealing with here and finally i'll just move that lead over there and we can see the voltage although it's negative of the second pack so hopefully i'll be able to provision and calibrate all in the same process okay with two modules connected up we can go to the modules button and a uh, provision and a provision has been requested we can close that and after a few seconds hopefully something will appear but you can go back to cancel and look at modules again and no still nothing there let's try again shall we or am i still waiting hmm so I've managed to provision the second module. I think I must have had a loose cable or something, uh, but that seems to have provisioned fine. And uh, so far I haven't calibrated it. So what was it? So it was 3.982. So we'll put that figure in there and press go. And hopefully when we come out of there, yeah, we're seeing 3.98 and uh, 4.8. Oh, oh so yeah they're pretty much as you would expect i'll now move on and provision a few more of these modules so i've got seven modules provisioned and the first six at least are all calibrated but this one seems to be a bit out but what i found you need to do and i think it was colin hickey who also mentioned he'd had this problem is you need to put any old number in the first column and then you can put the real value in the second one and the real cell voltage is 3.989 go and hopefully after a refresh of that page a slightly funny value there there we go so 3.989 volts so as you can see this pack is pretty close uh, 3.99 volts pretty much across the board i've got the lowest one here pack uh, module id 25 i should say which is my pack 2 which is the lowest and uh, pack 28 module id 28 which is pack 5 which is a little bit higher now i knew this was going to be a little bit higher uh, this 4 volt pack here because well i charged it so it was a little bit out of sort so hopefully if we come out of that page we can see all the various voltages there this one is ever so slightly higher than the rest and let's click this button the above average balance what does that do well it's been requested and hopefully yes one of those modules has got a red led on it so now that one is in bypass mode um but it is the seventh one which is interesting which i wouldn't say is above the average i would have thought it would try sell five first and then move on to another one but let's have a look at that on the wall and would you believe it the light's gone out it obviously has finished bypassing that pack but that resistor it was only on for a few seconds but no perhaps it is a tiny bit hotter but i'm only really guessing um let me press the button again for above average balancing and see if any of them yes look this one again it's saying this one is slightly higher so it's gone into bypass mode the red led is illuminated so uh something is happening um but i guess i'm gonna have to keep an eye on this and work out well if it's managing the pack effectively so i've come to the end of this video and i think i've progressed quite well i've managed to uh, choose my resistors the 22 ohm fit thermistors and of course 
provision and calibrate seven modules and now yes all these cells may be perfectly in balance for now and to be honest they're going to remain that way aren't they because well i'm not charging or discharging this pack so that's what i need to do in the next video i need to hook up some solar panels and a controller and uh, then take some energy out of them and at that point, we should be able to see the worth of the DIY BMS. Hopefully, it's going to keep this whole 7S pack in check. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.